Hey everybody, it's Jordan with PDQ.com. Uh, a couple of days ago, there was a pretty bad vulnerability found that is with the, the log for, for J feature. It's, uh, it's, it's in a lot of Java. It's an, it's an Apache log service that quite a few of uh, software you might not expect use. Uh, the problem with this one is it's rated a 10 out of 10 on the CVSS scale, which is obviously as bad as it gets. It's remote executable. It's easy to exploit. Uh, the scope, if it wasn't, uh, if it was locked to just the login file, it would still be 9.8, but it can escape that without problem. And so it makes it a, a 10 out of 10. It's, if you have this on there, your machine is completely exposed for someone to run just about any code they want that could take over your system without a lot of effort. Uh, to make matters worse, uh, to find out if your machine is vulnerable or not is not real intuitive. Uh, any software that uses this uh, Apache or this Java plugin or library is, is at risk, but you don't always know what it's going to be. Uh, so I guess the first thing security wants me to tell you, the PDQ deploy and PDQ inventory do not have this vulnerability in their product, so you're safe there. You don't need to worry about patching that one. Uh, I mean, when you send out the next update, still patch because why not? But you're not at risk for this one. But how do we track other software, whether it's other enterprise software, third-party software, uh, maybe your user downloaded some small game without you noticing, or, you know, they got Minecraft on it, they haven't patched. Just things of that nature. There's a lot out there. How do we track that down? And uh, unfortunately, the answer is not, not easily. Uh, but we have here, I built the scanner with the help of SS Chicken up on Reddit that kind of gives you a rough idea. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to help you track down, I think, in most cases, uh, what's wrong with that. So if we go to his Reddit thread, what he did is he went through and he found all of the hash files for the versions that are exploited. And this is anything from, uh, I believe, uh, 2. Dot anything to 2.14 are all bad. 2.15 has been patched. Or, yeah. <clears throat> so he went through and he got the hash files of each one of those. These are the bad hash files. He exploited one. And then we're, we're using PowerShell. We're doing get child item. We're looking for the log4j asterisk dot jar. And we're just scanning the C drive. Anything that pops up there, uh, we, know, we know is at risk. Uh, and at the end, it does a comparison do these hashes match up and it's going to come back and it's going to return uh, where each file is located and the hash that is that it was found that was uh, exploited. So if we're looking at the PowerShell in its full case here, we have the first part, the vulnerable sums. This is going out and this is grabbing all the bad hash files and returning that as a variable. The next one, local sums. This is the scanning the C drive. Uh, I ran this on the lab. There's 52 machines. None of them are overly large. It took about, for 52 with 32 concurrent scans, it took about nine minutes. So if you have a very large environment or very or machines that have a very large C drive, uh, it might take a long time from this one. You might see some issues. You might want to break it down into smaller scan groups and get it all out that way. It should work against all of them, but just to be safe, uh, just, uh, just, I guess, first scan, see how it goes, and if you, if you need to, break it up at that point. Uh, so the next part is if it's not null on the local sums, so if it did find some results where it has the L4J, it's going to compare the objects of the bad hashes to the good hashes, or, or not good hashes, but the hashes on the files that found on the computer and found if any of those match up on the two lists. And if they do, it's going to come into each one, and it's going to compare the hash of the existing file to the bad ones, and it's going to print off. Uh, an entire list of the bad files there. Uh, so if we go to PDQ inventory, and the scanners, <clears throat> I'm just going to open this one up. You can see here, this one is scan as local system. The reason we're doing that is it is going into some system files, everything in C drive. So if you run it as scan user, some files you're not going to have access to, it's going to error out. So we want to run this as local system. And the PowerShell scanner is just the same code that I had up in PowerShell there. Uh, <clears throat> uh, just, just, copied into the thing. You can save it as a PS1 file and do it there. This one's going to give you, if you put it up into a file here, it's going to give you easier editability. And if you make changes, you don't have to worry about going into the script here to do it. I just put it in here just for expediency. I had it ready to go. All right. And that's it. And that's just a scanner. It's just a simple PowerShell scanner. It takes some time. I pre-ran this one. So we built a dynamic collection. I named it Panic, and all we're doing is looking at the scanner we built, the column I put full name, and just matches pattern asterisks. And 
The reason I did this one is I don't care what the data is in there. This We're just looking for machines that are bad. So if there is data in there and it's not null, we want it to go into the collection. All right, so we close that out here. We see Colcat. We're going to open that up and take a look at the scanner. Scroll down to new log here. You can see it found two instances that were bad. They're the same hash file, which means they're both using the 2.12 uh, version of, of the uh, log4j. Uh, so this will help you. Hope it'll give you a collection. These all machines we know are bad. And if you open it up to those machines, you can see where the file is located. It'll give you an idea of what software might need to be patched based on those locations. In this case, it's in downloads because uh, our lab was, it was clean for this one, which is nice from a security standpoint, not so nice from a showcase standpoint. So I just put it in downloads. But in your case, if you find Minecraft, you can go ahead and uninstall Minecraft for them or if, patch it if you're okay with them having Minecraft. It just gives you a location to look on where you can fix it. Uh, I don't think the scanner is going to be 100%. Uh, that Just that uh, log system can show up just about anywhere, anything that uses Java. So it, it's uh, worth noting that this will give you some idea. It'll help you keep you somewhat protected. But as updates come out, which you're probably going to see a lot of software updates come out in the near future, just make sure your patches that come out because any patch coming out now is going to be upgrading that log to the 2.15 if, if the vulnerability is there. Uh, for PDQ.com, I'm Jordan.